I have my digging board and my spade in hand, and one thing I'm gonna do while the sun is rising up, it's nice and cool, is I'm gonna double dig this bed and see what it's like. Double digging, live and in the flesh, how bad is it or how good is it? Stay tuned to find out. I recently just pulled the chickens out of this run. They're over there fixing up some gopher damage. And I thought, I've been reading a lot of John Jevons work lately. Why don't I try double digging? Now this is the middle of summer. This is mid June. And I realize this isn't the best time to do a double dig. I should be doing it in the fall or in the springtime. But you know, what's optimal? Why do this? For a few reasons. One, I want to see what the deal is about double digging. How bad or how good is it to do? Is it so intense that you'd only do it once and you never want to do it again? I don't know. I've never done it seriously, so I'm going to do it on this bed, which is 24 inches by 16 and a half feet long, and I'm going to time it to see how long it takes. One thing I'm really curious about, too, is what does the soil look like down there? I've never actually gotten down there and dug a deep hole into the soil and I'm curious to see what does that soil below me look like. So why not dual purpose things, get the double dig in and check out the soil in the process. It's double digging. I've been wanting to do this double dig for a few weeks now but I needed to wait till the chickens were out of here to do it. One thing I want to try and do is incorporate all the manure that the chickens left on top down into the soil. That's one reason for timing it now. One thing I did too before I started this double dig is I made sure I put a string line on either side of my bed. A good visible string line. That way I'm digging in the bed, not the pathways themselves. I'm not doing extra work and I keep a hard edge on my bed, which is ultimately what I want in the long term. Only took a few seconds, but I think it's worth it to take that extra step to keep it clean. Okay, here we go. So my spade width trench is now dug. I'm gonna save this soil for later because this is gonna go in to fill the hole on that end when I'm done. Trench has now been dug, spade width, spade depth. Next step is to loosen up the subsoil with some sort of fork. I'm gonna use the bully tools fork just to loosen this up. And looking at this, It's pretty compacted. It's fairly dry and it's pretty hard. There's a lot of clay fill below here that I put in and I think that's the layer that I'm getting into. In doing this, what I'm starting to find is actually a lot of wood in here that's been broken down over time because this started out as a hugel culture bed many years ago and a lot of that wood is still buried in here. That's what I'm starting to get into here. The bottom of the trench has now been worked with the bully fork. I made sure to work it good. I figure if I'm digging, spend the time to really rough up that lower soil. The next step is to slide the board down and we'll do it again. You can see some of the clay because I'm getting big clods like this out. One thing I'm gonna need is a tote because the soil from the second trench is not wanting to stay just in the first trench. It's loose enough that it's just wanting to fall back in. So I'm gonna end up putting it in a tote. So here I am, 21 minutes into it. I'm sweating, it's getting tough. There's actually this big clay layer in the middle of this bed that I can't even get the fork into. So I'm gonna get a pick and a digging bar and just go to town on it. Like I said, I'm in here, I'm probably only doing this once. I might as well do it right. Here's what I'm doing here, I'm going down 
and I'm going at least spade width deep on the initial dig all the way across the channel like this. And I'm making sure to cut down along the edge of the rope and if I can, to go in to the pathway at an angle downward on both sides. So the first step is just to come through, clear all this out. And that gets me about to a depth, something like 11 inches. Then what I'm doing is I'm coming in with this bully tool, which has eight inch tines on it and I'm just going down throughout this hole and just ramming it in, pulling it back, and I'm even going to the extreme of putting it in and twisting it. And I'm going absolutely as deep as I can get this thing all the way across the hole, and that leaves this eight inches all light and fluffy. So in total, if it's just 11 and nine, 20 inches, that's what we're going down. That's doing some major loosening, and it's also integrating a lot of this organic matter on surface a little lower into the soil. It's a workout. It is a workout. 50 minutes in, I'm not done. I'm sweating. It's a workout. Made it to the end, but there's a hole at this side because we initially took that soil out, we put it in a bucket. So the last and final step of the double dig process itself is to fill the hole back in with the soil from the beginning. I'll do that right now. process is now complete. Let's see how long it took. Hour and 20 minutes. So one hour, 20 minutes to do a 16 foot, six inch long bed that's 24 inches wide. That's a long time and I'm tired. The hardest thing about this for me was I'm six feet tall and you're digging down almost 20 inches or trying to get the point at the final destination down 20 inches. So that's a lot of bending over. It, I'm not sore. It's just, it's a lot of hard work. I'm sweating. It's probably the best workout I've had in a, quite a long time because it's pretty consistent, pretty good cardio involved. So if you're looking for a workout, do the double dig. In terms of how the soil looked, it looked pretty good. I was going to show it on video a few times, but there's really not anything to see. It, there's a lot of clay lower down. When I initially built these beds up, I got a couple of loads of fill dirt and it was almost pure gray clay. That's what's on the bottom of all these. And then I've slowly built up with chickens running over cover crop and compost over time. So the lower layers, when I got down there with the bully fork, that's where a lot of the clay is. So I really tried to break that up. I didn't see a lot of biological activity in terms of worms in here. I never really have. I think part of the reason is it's really dry. I tend to just use drip over the summer versus broadcasting uh, water using overhead irrigation. So a lot of these beds where there's not drip on them, they tend to dry out. I think that's why there's not a lot of worms in the soil. In regards to the clay itself, one thing I think is clay is not going to change soil structure quickly without some human intervention. As much as we want to think cover crops and plant material and the bio biota and the soil are going to get down there and loosen up the clay, it's just not going to happen fast enough or on the time frame we want it to. So this clay has been in here maybe four years. I've probably had 20 cover crops on top of this and that clay layer is still solid clay. So as much as the roots are getting down there, the ratio of organic matter coming from the roots into the clay isn't that high, so the clay stays more or less clay, and the only way you're gonna get it broken up over time, I think, is by physical manual intervention via a tiller, via something like a subsoiler, via this double digging. 
This is my opinion, I could be wrong on this. And I'm not saying cover crops and plants and roots don't change soil structure. I think they do, but I think it's over a long time period. And generally for a lot of gardeners, a lot of market gardeners, you want results quicker. You can't afford to wait 10 years or 15 years for soil structure to change. So that's when you step in using inputs, materials like compost to change soil structure and tilth, or you use processes like double digging, or you use various tools like rototillers or subsoilers or broad forks to change the soil structure. And I'm curious to see now how this plays out. I may come back in and double dig this again in about six months closer to Christmas time just to see how the results are and how it looks. Right now, it seems pretty soft. I mean, those upper layers are really soft. I'll show you that in a moment. The lower layers are really soft and I won't walk on these beds now anymore. I will just stay on the pathways. I'm not gonna bring a rototiller in here at all. And this is one thing that was interesting doing this is I was going way below the depth of a tiller. A tiller might go nine inches, maybe a little more, and I'm down 20 inches, really breaking up the soil. How are the plants gonna like this? I don't know. But the next step will be after all of this is to seed a cover crop in here and see how that grows. I'm gonna do that right after I get done filming this video. Here's a look at the finished bed after double digging. That process has all been over and it did what John Jevons said it would do. It's mounded up because I've introduced a lot of air and void space into the soil. It's fluffed it up. So what I'm gonna do now is go over this with a rake just to break up some of these bigger chunks that are in the soil still, things like this and just to smooth out the profile a little bit. I'm gonna keep the raised shape because that's where it is, but I'm gonna at least flatten the top to make it easier to seed out. So what did this do for the soil structure? Let's take a look and see. Pretty loose. You can just ram my hand into it. So this is a nice structure. Be really nice if it stays this way. There we are all done. An hour and 23 minutes to do 16 feet of double digging. Insane or not insane? I guess it really depends. That's a lot of time for 16 linear feet of bed. The thought though, if you only have to do it once, it's not too bad. It's a workout if you're into that type of thing. It's great if you're not that physically able to do these types of things. You don't have the time, you have better things to do, you have more productive things to do, you maybe have things that could lead to money quicker if you're a farm. You probably wanna do those things first. This might not make sense. In thinking of it, in just thinking I have to do the rest of these beds, or I wanna do the rest of the beds, it's like, wow, it's gonna be a long time coming. But I'm kinda of looking at it like if I did one bed a week, that's not that bad. That's one good workout a week, and over the course of a few months, I have everything done. I don't think that's that amount of, that much time. And also knowing that this is a one-time deal, you do it once, you fix the soil structure, and you're good to go into the future, that justifies the effort. I like the idea of it. I can tell you for sure, just off initial look, the soil structure is a lot better. I think this is gonna help, but that's a think. We'll see now if it actually does help and how it holds up over time. Bottom line, double digging. A lot of work, hard physical work, a lot of time to do not that long of a bed, but you get an immediate change. You for sure instantly change the soil structure that you have. You for sure loosen up the subsoil. How does that play out over the long term? We'll have to see. If I had to say, should you double dig or not, I would say, if you have the time, do it. Why not? Put the work in, do it right once. But on the flip side, I get why people don't do it. They don't have the time. If you're interested, give it a shot. Check out John Jevons' book, highly recommended. Link to that below. Thanks for watching this one. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.